for you to play. If you go to Kahoot.it, if you go to Kahoot.it, game night starts at 9 o'clock. I'm just letting y'all know. But you can sign in. You can get started by going to Kahoot.it and then putting in this pin. And it's 959. I hope y'all can see this the right way because it's backwards to me. Let me know. 959-824. Oh, glory. I have no idea. Is it backwards or is it forwards? I am getting everybody prepared. This is my pregame. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to take questions. I wanted to just prepare you guys as best as I can for the NCLEX. Is it the right way? Can you guys see this the right way or is it backwards? Oh, it's backwards. Ah, okay. There's nothing I can do about it then. So if you go to kahoot.it, they can see it the right way on YouTube. Kahoot.it, put in the pin. The pin is, I'm not even gonna show this to you guys. The pin is 959. 824. Let me, let me see if I could do this. Um, so if I can turn my camera around, if I turn it around, let me see if I turn it around. Okay, here it is. So you guys can see if you go to kahoot.it. Okay. I see people getting in, they were waiting kahoot.it and then put in the pin nine, five, nine, eight, two, four. Yes, 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 yes. Um, Oh yeah, I could put it in the chat. That makes sense. All right, thank you so much for telling me that. I could put it in the chat and then I can see if I can pin my post. Okay, so there were a couple of announcements. Yes, I did get back from Las Vegas. So we put this in the announcements, kahoot.it. Um, now I'm not doing the live on this channel. I'm gonna log off here, all right? I just wanted to do some pre preliminary. So you guys can see your name as you're joining. The game starts at nine o'clock. So we're just here, just pre-gaming it. We're just pre-gaming it right now. Kahoot.it. And then the pen is going to be nine, five, nine. And then eight, two, four. Now, remember when you're playing this, and hopefully that stays at the top. When you guys are playing Kahoot, you're going to need two devices. You're going to need a device to see the questions and then you're gonna need another device to actually answer the questions. You might wanna have a laptop and a phone, a tablet or a phone, two phones, your kids, you know, tablet, whatever, but you're gonna need two, um, two tablets. So I'm gonna be doing it live on YouTube. You probably will find it better on YouTube. Now, I see your question, Dewey, um, Carpo. I do want to tell you guys that we have heard you guys and there is an option now for the V2. Remember the price increase for the V2 to 169 and the value is there. Like, you know, V2 is, is legit. It's the truth. But I logged in to the website and I saw that Team Remar did something for you guys. They did a quick start option or the V2, and guess what the price is for the quick start start option. For those of you that wanna get into the V2 and you are ready to get going, that price is $89. So if you go to remarnurse.com and you click on V2 for RN or V2 for PN, you will see the $89 price for the quick start option. And let me explain to you how that's gonna work. You're going to get pretty much everything. You're going to get the system. You're going to get the quick facts book plus the downloadable workbook. This is the pin right here for $89. And you're going to get one month access. So that's four weeks into the program. Now, somebody said, yep, I brought it today. <laughs> okay. So that is four weeks into the program. In four weeks, this is the password. In four weeks, you are able to do this calendar. You're able to do this calendar. So that means that if you are testing in September, if you are even testing, you know, if you're testing in the end of August, you can do and you should do the quick start program, especially if you've been just um, aimlessly doing other things. All right. So I want to uh, thank Team Remar for making that possible. You guys were able to um, compromise in a way. 
it's 169 if you need three months access to the v2 but the system is always changing and developing and so now now if you are looking for a quick start option your test is coming up you just need four weeks then it will be the 89 dollars price for you guys so i am i'm really happy i'm really happy to see that hey everybody come So let me, oh, so this live was still going on. Okay, 
sorry guys, we lost connection, we lost power, and we had to, we just lost the internet. So hopefully you guys are still with us on YouTube and Facebook. Let me see if my Kahoot is still functional. We might have to put a new, um, a new game pin, okay? A new game pin. Let me try it. It says you keep going in and out. Can you guys hear me now? Oh no. <laughs> uh, it's so hard. It's hard for us to um it's hard for me to tell if if we're still connected or not. I'll put a five in the chat if you can hear me. Put a five in the chat. Somebody says I can't get into Kahoot. In the middle of the broadcast, it was the strangest thing. It was like we experienced a total blackout. Okay, yep, so. okay so they can still, <laughs> they can still hear us. Okay, shout out, shout out to every everybody. All right, now, so the next thing is now we have to re-see if this Kahoot code is working. And yes, the, the connection, oh man, the connection totally failed. It was like a pitch black. The people on Instagram saw it. They said they can't get into the Kahoot. Okay. Hmm. That's why I needed to come on here. Something said come on early and just spend some time with this community. All right. I got to start Kahoot again. Somebody says no sound and I'm freezing. If you guys are watching me on Facebook, uh, I'm sorry, on Instagram, Get over to YouTube because this is, it's not doing well. Okay. Yes. Thank you guys so much for giving me the confidence to say um, that this will keep on going. You know how the enemy be trying to shut our stuff down. Ugh. I guess I have to talk about again the, um, the quick start option for V2. I was in the middle of telling... You guys, that we did, uh, we did, or Team Remar made a very special, a very special gift for you guys, which is they, they, they created a quick start option for the V2. So I was saying that the V2, the price was one sixty nine for three months, and now if you want to get started with V2 and you need one month preparation time then you can get the V2 price for $89. And if you go to remarnurse.com, you are able to get started. You are able to get started. Okay, I'm gonna try to go in and do this Kahoot again. I might have to write down a new code and, and see. Um, or I could probably shut down. Let me see, let me see if it's still gonna be working. What's V2? V2 is my NCLEX prep program, and it is going to be the best option if you need a content review. And then also, if you would like to do practice questions like the case studies and the next gen style questions, that's going to be the best mode. Okay. So it looks like, guys, we did lose our Kahoot. So whew, we did lose our Kahoot. Now, let's. We're gonna have to do another one. Let me see. We're gonna have to do another one. Is this the right one though? You think this is the right one? Let me go back. Sorry guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna show this to you in one second. All right, Tasha, did you pass? Let me know if you passed. All right. Um, let me go back even more. I want to make sure this is the right game night. I think it is. Yes. So it's that game night. I see the name up there. All right. So here is the new pin, guys. Here's a new pin. If you're just joining us, this is the pin for our game night. I apologize. We had a major power outage during our last one. So here it is. Now, if you want to join, okay, if you want to join and you want to get on, it is, no, no, just get a new one, please. It is kahoot.it. And the game pen is ah, 40311. Come on in. I see you guys. <laughs> All right. Thank you for being so flexible with the power outage. Fingers crossed that we do not have another blackout. 
we do not have another blackout. Go to Kahoot. I'm going to write it down. Kahoot. Let me spell it too. Oh. Kahoot.it. And my game pen. Did we send this out? We need to email this out. Okay. Four zero. Because people are going to be like, what? Three, one, one. All right. And so what we're doing now is I'm sending everybody to Kahoot.it. Four zero three one one, and we didn't even. I honestly, I just want this to be a, a fun experience for us. I want this to be a fun experience for us. We are going to play for prizes, but I don't. I mean, I think maybe top prize will be like fifty dollars. Let's do fifty, forty, and thirty. Okay, fifty, forty, and thirty. Let me know if you guys can hear me. We are playing all subjects on tonight. I got 70 people joining. Let me do some of these questions right now for you guys. Because while we have the game night doesn't start until nine o'clock. But I could do some questions. Um, hello, please. Do I need to pick a date for my NCLEX exam before joining V2? I don't think you necessarily need to pick a date, but it's good to have one in mind because you're you're moving towards something and having that NCLEX uh, date behind you actually does push you to do that. All right. Amanda says, it happened. I took my NCLEX Saturday, August the 19th. I got my test results Tuesday. I passed my test. I am a Remark nurse representing the LPN tribe. Everybody say congratulations to Amanda. This is an incredible testimony. Thank you for all you do to make us great nurses. She's telling you that, guys, the key. Content content, content. And so if you're not doing content, and I know some people think I only want to do practice questions, or I feel like I should just be doing practice questions nine times out of 10, you need to be doing content too, up until the very, very end, up until the very, very end. That is the way that you pass this exam. That's the way that you pass this exam. Doris says, y'all make sure y'all get the V2222222. This is how I pass hashtag R. In. Thank you so much. Congratulations to everybody that's passing with the V2. I am inclined to just say it's working. It's working. And actually now is the time for you to be making that move. Regina, what is reinforced teaching questions? Um, reinforced teaching questions are similar to follow-up teaching questions, meaning that you need to identify something that is wrong in that specific, um, in the specific options, something that the patient is saying wrong, something that the patient is doing wrong. And the way that you do that is by actually understanding whatever that medication is, whatever that disease is. And you get really well when you get really well on these types of questions when you understand the concept and and this is what i'm saying um uh, there are some parts of nursing that you need to know for NCLEX that you're just not going to be able to learn from a question bank a question bank is not going to teach you that follow-up or reinforcement questions are where you're looking for things that are wrong you you'll have to be able to critically think and figure out some of this stuff on your own but the more comfortable, but the more comfortable that you get with the content, the easier it will be for you to answer any question. If you understand, if you understand, for example, nitroglycerin, if you understand the teaching, the principles of nitroglycerin, then you can answer a question that is a case study question, a follow up or reinforcement, any, any kind like a question because you understand that subject. And so that's the kind of thinking we have to have on all of, you know, the, the content areas. All right. So tonight we are doing Kahoot game night. If you want to play, the game starts in a little less than half an hour, 30 minutes, going to Kahoot.it. Put in the pin four zero three one one. Okay. Four zero three one one. All right. I am, I am so excited that tonight um, I have people from all over. All right. Hi. Hi, Esther. How you doing? All right. 
Can you get a lecture on highlight questions, please? So the, the idea of the highlight question is going to be very specific to the text that you are encountering on your NCLEX exam. So highlight questions can really range from um, highlight the signs and symptoms that are consistent with pulmonary edema. It can be highlight the um, highlight the patient statement that requires follow up. It can be highlight the vital signs that are inappropriate or abnormal. So as you can see, the highlight question is essentially a select all that apply question in a different presentation. But in order for you to get through it, in order for you to get through that highlight question, you have to be able to identify, um, you have to be able to identify the abnormal cues. Highlight questions, particularly in case studies, hold up the code. This is the code. Highlight questions, particularly in case studies, are going to be seen in the earlier parts of the case studies. So question one, all right, where you're recognizing the abnormal cues, you have to be able to do that, right? So questions one, two, and three is where I like to write my highlighting questions. And I think that um, others who are writing case studies for next-gen NCLEX, they like to put their highlighting questions earlier because they're more mimicking a select all that apply question. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Hi, Veronica. Veronica says, I have V2 and I'm from Virginia. I like that. Veronica with V2 from Virginia. The game starts at nine o'clock. And right now I'm just taking questions from you guys. Um, Martha, if you need a content-based lecture, I think that you would find, no matter how long you've been out of school, that the lectures in V2 are going to allow you to catch up yourself to speed very quickly. You're going to be able to get started and um, catch it up. Mira Marie says, I wish I could have Regina teach me this content one-on-one -on -one because my anxiety is crazy. I even take meds so that I can focus. Man, forget that I'm speaking and passing it into the universe. Yeah, definitely speak positive. And I'll say this, um, when you have anxiety, I find that when you do the work, when you do the work, and you're right, we all got this. When you do the work of preparing for NCLEX independently, it actually helps with your anxiety. Because if I was there with you every time you sat down, what would happen is you would become dependent on me during your studying process. Now, that may be a good thing, like, oh, Regina, you'll be there to encourage me. However, when it's time for you to go into that testing room, I can't go in there with you. And so that would bring back all the anxiety. So one of the good things about V2 is that I am there teaching you the information, but you are empowered to do the work independently, which is a huge part of being uh, more cour courageous when it comes time for your test day. So you can do it, you can do it. Follow the study calendar. And I like you, speak positive, speak positive, all right? Congratulations to everybody that's saying they passed. You can do this. Custom wavy baby, as someone said, they will be taking their NCLEX in two weeks and if it's too late to purchase V2. We have people who have done, maybe some of you, we have people who have done the V2 in two weeks. Um, and it is, if you, if you're following the study calendar, I reckon you would have to do, uh, well, you would have to do 10 study sessions a week. And that would be two, you guys can see the study calendar. That would be two study sessions a day. Let me see if I can show you guys the study calendar. I have to be very, very careful. Up. Okay. All right. So if you have the study calendar here, and you, you see there's 20 study sessions. If you do two study sessions a day for 10 days, you can get through all of the content in V2 at least one time, at least one time. Now, um, I think that it would still give you maybe a day or two to do the computer adaptive exams. I would at least want you to take one computer adaptive exam before your actual NCLEX, 
Okay. But is it possible? Yes, it is possible. How many hours am I supposed to study for the NCLEX? Great question. Um, I say in the study calendar, no more than three hours a day. No more than three hours. Okay. That is if you are doing the four week program. If you're doing the four week program. All right. Let's see here. We got Remar nurses coming in. Kahoot.it. The game starts at 9 p.m. 40311 is the pen. Shout out to Nurse Felicia. Hey, Remar nurses. I took my NCLEX on August 3rd and I finally passed with 87 questions. Wow. That's like amazing. All right. Um, Taylor, yes, you are able to watch the V2 videos again and again. You can't, you should be able to do that. All right. Um, I play them all the time. This is a great question. Can V2 help me passing my Kaplan exit exam for my nursing program? That's a shame. That's a shame, Anthony, because I really want you to be able to pass this exam. Um, I typically do not say to pair different NCLEX reviews together, but I think because you are studying for the exit exam, it's a little bit different. And so I, I would, because honestly, I don't know, but I'm assuming that you need to pass that exit exam in order to graduate. So desperate times call for desperate measures. I would definitely get in the V2 if you feel like you need a content review. I'm going to start from pregnancy and then I'm going to take you to age specific nursing care. We'll talk about respiratory, endocrine, um, cardiac along the way. And then we'll end in delegation assignment, management of care, prioritization. Okay. I think that'll be helpful. Yes, you are right. This is the game night. It's going to start at 9 p.m. And it is going to be a hodgepodge. Okay. It's going to be a hodgepodge of topics. I'm going to talk about asthma. I'm going to talk about ferrosamide. I'm going to ask you questions about uh, strokes. What else do we have? We have, we have 20 questions that are going to probably take you all over, all over. There was not one subject that I stuck with. It's a lot. Prioritization, so much, okay? So that is coming up in about 15 minutes. We have another game night. I'm so excited. I got 200 people playing. Top prize tonight is $50. Second place prize is $40. And third place prize, what did I say? $30. $30. So I am, I am, I am looking for, for who's going to win this money tonight. And what are you going to do with it? Alert, alert. Ronald Gale 196 says, I took my NCLEX RN examination yesterday and I got the good pop up three times. Okay. I used the V2 quick facts and YouTube videos and I passed. I'm officially a Remar nurse thanks to the prof. Huh? Don't switch back over. What's that mean? Oh, don't even like, don't leave to another one. Yes. I gotcha. Okay. okay thank you. Um, I want to. What did I want to say? Mark interrupted me. I do want to say congratulations. Um, but I also wanted to say something else. Man, you know how people come in and you're in a, in a groove of something and they interrupt your thoughts. That's what Mark just did. <laughs> Good luck. You are testing tomorrow morning. What are you doing here? Oh, that's what I wanted to say. I think that when you have V2 and when you're studying the Quick Facts book, when you're studying the Quick Facts book, I think those those help you tremendously with your content, but also coming to the Monday motivations and the winning Wednesdays, I think that helps you with your critical thinking along the way. Uh, let me know if I'm wrong or not, but I do think that the study sessions that we do during the week are very important in also building your confidence and uh, being able to break the habit of second guessing yourself. When, when we come here and we answer questions, I've noticed that a lot of the testimonials I get, they say that they attend these classes that we have, all right? And so I just, um, I, I like when you guys show up to do stuff like this, because it's not like officially part of the program, but it definitely helps. Do we have to study from both 
study calendar. This is the V2 and the book. Okay. So remember, for those of you who are just doing the Quick Facts book and you don't have the lectures, the Quick Facts book has its own study calendar. And it is to help you to memorize this book. However, once you get the lectures, then once you get this book right here with the actual lectures, then this becomes the priority for you. I love this book, but this is not before this book because in this book is where I actually explain to you, I actually explain to you guys the, the theory and the, the fundamental understanding of nursing care. So you would then begin to use the calendar. I think this book, if you have this book, it has a calendar in it. You would then use this book, this book calendar. Does that make sense? Uh, hi, Remar. My name is Megan M. And I took NCLEX RN last Tuesday and I passed in 85 questions. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome and congratulations, NCLEX RN. That's a new life. If you are joining us for t the game night tonight, is Kahoot.it. The pen is four three. The pen is four zero three one one. I'm so nervous about this power outage. I'm just I'm just praying that we don't have that experience anymore. We don't have that experience anymore. Okay. All right. Um. So I would just say this. I would just say this. And this is one of the. This is actually one of the questions tonight. Where did it go? Regina, please tell me about Mona, please. So I'm assuming when you talk, when you mention this, you're talking about morphine, oxygen, nitroglycerin, aspirin. These are the um, interventions. These are the beginning interventions for somebody who is having a suspected myocardial infarction, unidentified chest pain, but more, more, more or less we usually see these interventions with somebody who's having a heart attack. So there are four primary medications that you're going to get. Morphine is a medication. Oxygen is a medication. Nitroglycerin is a medication. And aspirin is a medication. I think that we learned this in nursing school, but for the NCLEX exam, it is going to be uh, a more important priority to know the order that you give these. And out of these four interventions, which one would you say was the most important out of the four? And I'm not going to tell you the answer because that is actually one of the questions tonight for game night. So when you see it, you will know it. Okay. Um, Lexi. Hi, Lexi. Lexi says, I took my NCLEX on Saturday. First time test taker. I passed on 85 questions. I'm a proud Remar nurse. Lexi, I don't remember seeing your name before. So if you've been a silent follower, thank you so much for coming back and letting us know. Um, is there anybody else that wants to answer this question too? Sometimes I feel like I say the same things and maybe I miss something that you guys would add. This uh, question is, is there any advice for what to review? My test date is very, very soon. My test date is very soon. How should we answer that question on what to review? Um, Rena, Remar, I don't have the blue book, only the NGN. How do I get the blue book? Uh, you can go to remarnurse.com. You can go to remarnurse.com. The blue book comes with the V2 package. So actually, when you... Okay, let me try to do this. Actually, when you order the lectures in the program, you're going to get access to the V2 environment. Yes, you're going to get access to the V2 environment. And so this is what the course looks like. And these are all of the lectures, Rena, that actually come with the course. So these are videos. Now, in the platform V2, there's a file vault. And when you go to the file vault, you're going to have your course resources. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is that you will be able to Oh, here it is. You will be able to download this book and you will be able to print it out because it's going to help you to, if you click that blue arrow, it's going to help you to fill out your workbook. Okay. Uh, B2 workbook. And so you'll be able to download and print that workbook. All right. And that is how you get access to 
the blue book. It comes with the actual lectures. So you already have half of the program. So literally, if you do the quick start option, if you go to remarnurse.com, you can get the entire platform, the question bank, and the computer adaptive test. Okay, I have the lectures too. You said you already have the lectures. Okay, Rena, so we just did all that for you. Okay, <laughs> all right. Um, so, Kahoot.it. Somebody says, what are we doing tonight? We're going to Kahoot.it because it's game night. All right. Hey, 40311. Okay. Lexi Joe says, I am Lexi Joe. I'm new to Remar. I recently failed my NCLEX RN, just started V2, and I'm excited to start my new journey. I'm so happy to have you here. Please let me know how you're liking the program. Also, uh, let me know if there's anything I can do to help you. All right. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help you. All right. Um, I'm going to go to the, let me go back to Kahoot being very careful that I don't do anything. Okay. Um, core content is key. Lexi just passed. Core content is key. As Professor Regina says, the exam is all over the place. The exam is all over the place. The V2 is a great tool to start with. I think this is a really good point because you know what? When you're taking NCLEX exam, it is like you are thrown into the dryer and there's a hundred pieces of clothes in the dryer. And while you're being tossed around in the dryer, you have to fold up the clothes inside of the dryer. That's what it feels like. You're like you are, you're going to get a question about cardiology and you're going to get another question about developmental milestones. And then they might ask you to interpret an arterial blood gas. And I remember sitting in front of the NCLEX exam, like, where is reality? All right. Um, and the only thing that grounded me is that I knew my content. Like that was it. It was no, there was not a point in time where I said to myself, ah, uh, I, I had a question like this. For me, that wasn't my experience. It, I did not think of a specific question. I thought of I understand how to interpret arterial blood gases. I know this is metabolic alkalosis. I didn't, I didn't think I had a question like this before. It was just like, I know what a six month old is supposed to be doing. All right. And so that is, um, I, I think that's a really great observation from somebody who recently took NCLEX. It's all over the place. It really is. It's all over the place. All right. What chapters are the questions coming from tonight? It's coming from everything. It's just a general, I know sometimes I'll say, well, this is coming from quick facts or this is not, but it really is, um, it really is just like a hodgepodge, okay? All right. Um, Key says, do we need a certain percentage on the V2 bank quizzes, lecture quizzes, et cetera? Yeah, so for the question bank quizzes that you make on your own, if you go to the question bank and you create your own quiz, Oh, we started in eight minutes. Okay. Um, anyways, if you're in the question bank and you have your own exam, then the V2 will tell you how you're doing there. Uh, for the lecture exams, I want you to get a 60%. A 60% is competent, is entry level competency for my quizzes. Okay. That is how I, I'm trying to transfer it to the probability percentage of the actual NCLEX exam. So for me, 60% is, um, is good. It's really good. Okay. And it is the goal that you should be going for. All right. Um, V2 quick start. V2 quick start is $89. You can go to remarnurse.com. Somebody says, Google me, Google my name. All right. <laughs> okay. Oh, Mark Lexi is thanking you. Mark Lexi says, I must say, thank you so much, Professor Regina and Mark. You're both a godsend. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mark. Okay. And content, content is key. Indeed, the exam is all over the place. So once you know the no, you will succeed. Absolutely. Absolutely. You will not succeed if you don't know about content. What was I saying about 50, 40, and 30? Those are the prizes for tonight if you go to Kahoot.it and put in the game 40311.
first place winner will get $50. Second place winner will get $40. And third place, come on and get $30 of prizes. $30 is a quick facts book, okay? $30 will buy you a quick facts book or probably two cups of coffee at Starbucks. So what do you wanna do? How are we investing, okay? All right. Oh, okay. Amazing. Amazing. Professor Regina, the content that I found difficult, you made it learnable and retainable. I thank God for Remar. Amazing. 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 Um, Rose Mita says, do, do I need to reschedule my exam due date? I felt the cat. Um, I would say no, not necessarily. The cat exam that you take for me is supposed to be a preparation and a practice, but at the end of it, it is supposed to be a study tool. Okay. So the areas that you get, I just had my cat. Here it is. My printout for the cat exam. You probably can't see it. These areas here that says whether you were below, below or above, go back into the question bank and study these areas. Okay. That's what this is for. Okay. Um, and, and so again, it's just about you being exposed to the content. People say my cat exam is harder than the NCLEX. All right. So I just want you to attempt to do them. You pass one of them, amazing. Okay, that is that is that is the goal. So if you didn't pass the first one, take it again. All right, um, here we go. Let me do the login. Somebody says, "What's the login?" So you go to Kahoot.it and then put in the pen four zero three one one. You definitely will need to have. All right, you will need to have the. Two devices you will need to have one device that you can see the questions on i'm gonna try to put the questions on here but you will definitely need to have another device that you can answer the questions for okay uh let's see <laughs> audrey says the money will be for first shift <laughs> first shift is my book how to dominate your first two years of nursing i need to do a course on just first shift because you could be a nurse or you could be the nurse. And the nurse has a different experience than just a nurse. I want y'all to be the nurse. Like I want y'all to have the nursing career of your dreams. First shift will do that for you. It's it's the things that I would tell you if, if I was your preceptor. Okay, here you go. Do you see your name on the leadership board? Can you see it coming? Can you see it coming? All right, um, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us on tonight. We got four minutes and we will be starting our famous, infamous Kahoot game, next generation style. Get into it. Get into it right now. Go to kahoot.it four zero three one one four zero three one one. You don't need to have an exam date before joining V2. I saw that question again. Um, does the NCLEX, does the ABG NCLEX question ask about compensated, uncompensated? No, you don't have to worry about that. That's a great question. You only will have to know straight uncompensated, okay? All right. Um, if you don't see your name, guys, understand that there are 370 people right now logged in. And so the screen is only going to show just a few the more recent ones. So as long as you are in the waiting room, you are good, okay? You are good. I wanna welcome everybody that is joining. Very soon, I will be hitting the start button and I hear the thunder and the rain outside and I am just like, Lord, hold back these wins until we get through this game night. So I will not be tarrying in three minutes. You better tag your friends and let them know game night is happening. All right. Good luck, guys. You got this. All right. Now, if you want to log out and log back in, you can do that very quickly. Just make sure that you have your devices. And we're rolling. We are rolling, rolling, rolling. It's winning Wednesday. Did you know that every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time, we do stuff like this? We study. We study Mondays at noon Eastern time, no matter where I am on this planet. And then we study on Wednesdays at 9 p.m. And so this is just a game night. Whew. All right, let's go, guys. Come on in, kahoot.it, I see you. Shari, I see you, Dio, Tania, Pompano, nurse. I saw somebody from Hawaii 
on tonight. Welcome here. It's good to have you. Um, we are praying for all of the islands in Hawaii. Um, love it there. Love it, love it, love it. And I am um, praying for you guys. All right. Also, who do we have representing in the house? Any other countries that want to come on here and let me know where you're from? This is an international community. Over 800 nurses are watching. San Antonio, Texas also happens to be in the house. I love Texas. Love going down there. Hi, Brittany. My best friend lives in Texas. I miss her very much. All right. Um, Kahoot.it. 40311 India, Cali, Philippines. I'm going to the Philippines next year. I'm trying to prepare my mind for that flight. It's like something like 27 hours, but I will be there in the Philippines. Can we meet up? Can you make a place for me? I want to do an NCLEX review. Not like a big one, but just like a small one. Probably about six, seven hundred people will show up to that review. I'm down for it. Manila, I'm coming. All right, California in the house, Arkansas. Pass my NCLEX. Lilla Beth said, I passed my NCLEX early August. I'm coming to take this money from y'all. <laughs> All right, Cleveland, Ohio, my neighbor. Love it, love it, love it, love it. I plan to be in Cleveland soon. All right, North Carolina, Jamaica, the home planet. I love it. All right, guys, hi, AT, welcome. Now, let's get it going. Let's get it going. Final chance to go. New York City, New Jersey, the neighbor, Liberia, go to Kahoot.it 40311. Where else can you find literally the globe, Kenya, Massachusetts, Nigeria, Canada? All right. Where else can you find everybody from all over the place? Okay. Studying right now. It's incredible. Over 800 people. Is there anybody else? Is there anyone else wanting to come in? From the Bahamas, Connecticut, Nebraska. El Nido. Is that a place? Where is that? El Nido. Where is it? Oh, El, oh it's in the um, oh, it's in the Philippines. Boracay. Borica, is that, is that um, another, another place? I'm poor. Puerto Rico, Somalia. Pass with V2. Hey, V2 right now, $89. Did you know that? Here we go. I'm starting it. Ready? If you're ready, put ready in the comments. I'm so nervous. All right, but we can't tarry. All right, I'm going, Mark. It's happening right now. Last people, come on in, late comers. Hurry up. Hurry up. Okay, 470, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ready, ready, ready. Okay, Dynasty said she's ready to go. Joy says she's ready. So I'm starting it right now. <laughs> Let's go, guys. Game night, Remar. August the 23rd, three, two, whoo, one. First question is this, a 30 year old client is admitted with a suspected overdose of acetaminophen. What medication should the nurse prepare to administer as an antidote? Is it naloxone? We're talking about an overdose, acetaminophen. Activated charcoal, atropine, in acetylcysteine, what is it? All right, this game night, all right, this game night is for you, all right? Suspected overdose, what you gonna do? What you gonna do, all right? Are we doing naloxone? Make sure you're reading. Activated charcoal, atropine, <laughs> NL acetylcysteine. Somebody says, oh, man, <laughs> I read too fast. Okay, take your time. You got nine seconds to smash that share button right now. This is the biggest game night happening. All right, correct answer. 320 people got it right, as I suspected the majority would. Top place winner is Carmen. I see you, Larry B, too, as well. You're creeping on the third and acetylcysteine is the antidote for acetaminophen overdose. It helps prevent uh, or reduce liver damage, which is what we're worried about when our patient has an overdose of uh, acetaminophen. I'm moving on. Question number two. A client with a history of congestive heart failure is prescribed a loop diuretic to take at home. What should the nurse instruct the client to monitor while taking this medication? Serum potassium levels, daily weight, blood glucose levels, blood pressure at bedtime. We are talking about a loop diuretic. The nurse needs to provide education. 
okay? Serum potassium levels, daily weight, blood glucose levels, blood pressure at bedtime. Ooh, I love this game night. I love this one. It's fire. It's critical thinking. You got 18 seconds. All right. I got a mix of people who are saying it's red. Some people are saying no, but it's yellow. Which one is it? Talking about a loop diuretic, but wait, wait, wait. Correct answer is what? Correct answer was the yellow. Did you get that right? The daily weight. That is the most important. Did it change the leadership board? A little bit, a little bit. Correct answer, daily weights, okay? Because remember, this is a patient at home. No way to monitor, right, Ty? You can't monitor it at home. We know loop diuretics can lead to fluid loss and dehydration. So the daily weight is going to be the most effective, all right? Most effective. Yes, it's because the patient was at home. Every little detail counts. I'm moving on. Here we go. A client with hyperthyroidism is scheduled for radioactive iodine therapy. What is the primary purpose of this treatment? Red, increase thyroid hormone medication. Decrease thyroid hormone production. Decrease iodine deficiency. Improve heart function. All right. Okay. We are talking about radioactive iodine therapy for hyperthyroidism. Okay. And so what is the goal of it? Okay. What is the goal of it? This is where content comes in and I'm asking you questions from all over. So make sure, make sure that, um, you know, you're, you're, you're evaluating yourself during this process. Okay, you're evaluating. So let's see how the group did. The majority of you got it right. All right, there were 64 people though, I think may have misread it and that's okay. You won't forget it, okay? You won't forget it the next time. And I just wanna note that when it comes to Kahoot, the Kahoot counts the questions and the rationales um, as, as slides. So some people are like, well, I'm on slide number six. It's because it's counting the rationales too. It's counting every slide, okay? All right, so we're going to go back into it. All right, 104 of you guys are on a streak. Steph, welcome to the leadership board. The radioactive iodine, all right, is the radioactive iodine therapy is used to destroy a portion of the thyroid gland, reducing its ability to produce excessive thyroid hormones, which is a common goal in treating hyperthyroidism. So, the way that you guys also get points for those who are playing the first time, it's not only you getting the right answer, but they give you extra points if you get it in a faster time. So it's right answers and it's speed, okay? It's right answers and it's speed. Okay, let's try another question here. Correct question. Well, correct answer was that. Here we go. All right, a client with cancer is receiving radiation therapy. What is a common side effect of radiation therapy that the nurse should assess for in this client? Okay, hypertension is red. Yellow is bone fractures. Blue is peripheral neuropathy. Green is anemia. Oh, my, my, my. Talking about radiation therapy, hypertension. Red, bone fractures, yellow, peripheral neuropathy, blue, or anemia, green. I see a lot of people with anemia. Mm. Mm -hmm -hmm. What do you guys say? You got 10 seconds. I am looking forward to seeing how you guys do. Uh, ooh, a lot of people picked anemia, but the correct answer was peripheral neuropathy. Ah, 
let us read about it. Anemia, I think you guys were thinking of maybe neutropenia, maybe, uh, but you guys can let me know if it was like, oh, I, I mixed it up. So radiation therapy can cause damage to the peripheral nerves, leading to peripheral neuropathy, characterized by tingling, numbness, and weakness in the extremities, okay? And I think a lot a lot of you now will be like, ah, I won't forget that one. Some of you got this one right, though. Next question is this. A client is experiencing a severe asthma attack. Oh my goodness, that's the rain. <laughs> Let me read this. A client is experiencing a severe asthma attack. Which intervention should the nurse prioritize? Prioritize, oh my goodness. Number one, administering oxygen at two liters per minute. Yellow, encouraging the client to lie flat on their back. Blue, administer a high dose corticosteroid or green, instruct client to use their inhaler as needed. All right, what do we think? Okay, a client is experiencing a severe asthma attack. Which intervention should the nurse prioritize? Administering oxygen at two liters per minute. Yellow, encouraging the client to lie flat on their back. Blue, administer high dose cortical steroids. Green, instruct client to use inhaler as needed. Here we go, guys. Correct answer. Did the majority of us get it right? We didn't. We didn't. The majority of people picked to instruct the client to use their inhaler as needed. No, this is a severe asthma attack. Okay. So, the priority here, let's see if the leadership board changed a little bit. Yeah. Administer a high dose cortical steroid. So in a severe asthma attack, the ste cortical steroid is going to reduce inflammation quickly. And then by that, it will open up those airways. All right. And that's why it's a high dose cortical steroid. And so administering oxygen is necessary but this is one of those tricky prioritization questions where oxygen is not always the right answer. There are going to be some conditions where oxygen is not the priority. Asthma is one of those, okay? Asthma is one of those. Um, hemorrhaging, if the patient is bleeding out or if the patient is having a hypovolemic shock, Oxygen is not going to be the priority. What would be the priority? If your patient is hemorrhaging, what's the priority? It's not, it's not oxygenation, right? It's not oxygenation. It's restoring the fluid volume. It's going to be the IV fluids. It's going to be the, um, what else? What else can we give? It's, it's leaving my mind right now. Um, the vasopressin, right? That's going to increase the circulation. That's what we will be going doing. So we want to be very careful to not always do oxygen for everything. It's not always going to be the correct answer. All right, we're learning here. We're learning here. That's why we do game night. Let's go. Let's go. Next question is this. A client presents with a non-healing wound, bruises, gingivitis, and joint stiffness. Okay. This presentation is common with, let's do some deficiencies here. Is it going to be iron deficiency? Is it going to be vitamin B deficiency? Is it going to be vitamin C deficiency? Okay. Is it going to be zinc deficiency? Ah, non-healing wound, bruises, gingivitis, and joint stiffness. What are we going to say is happening here? Uh, I got 15 seconds. The presentation is going to be common with which one? It is going to be common with, hey, the majority of you got this one right. It was blue. Good job. I thought that would be, I thought that would be tougher than what it was, but you guys are holding it down. So scurvy is a disease caused by vitamin C deficiency, and it's characterized by prominent cutaneous signs, petechiae, and bruising. 
gingivitis, arthralgias, and impaired wound healing. Very good job. The studier showed up tonight. Oh my goodness, 1,100 nursing students. The client with an overactive bladder is taking oxybutynin, the most common adverse reaction to taking this medication. Bradycardia, red, bruising, yellow, dry mouth, blue, or diarrhea. Ah, we went over something like this similar during our, um, I think it was, a, I think it might've been a winning Wednesday. What do you guys know about this, con this medication or this overactive bladder condition? Cause that'll help you too. Let's go. This is remarnurse.com, our game night. And we are definitely, okay? We are definitely in it to win it. Share this video with your friends. They could be studying with you. They could be studying with you. The goal for tonight is that you learn something new by just being here. Correct answer. I see a lot of people picking blue. Blue is the right answer. So you were in step with that. Our leadership board change. Welcome to the top. Steph, I see you. Dry mouth. So oxybutynin is an anti-muscarinic that relaxes the bladder by inhibiting the muscarinic action of acetylcholine on smooth muscles. Woo, that's nursing language for you. One of the common adverse reactions is dry mouth and dry eyes due to its anticholinergic effects, its anticholinergic effects. All right, let's go on. Next question is this. Erythrocytosis can cause chronic headache and joint pain. The nurse knows that this condition could be linked with, is it red alcohol use, yellow iron deficiency, blue obesity, or green smoking? Hmm. Talking about erythrocytosis, you got headaches and joint pain. This is a negative. This is a negative for our patient, a negative experience, a negative condition. So what could be a cause of this? Thinking about what's happening. Is it going to be alcohol use, yellow iron deficiency, obesity, smoking? So happy to see um, our international nurses representing today all over. I don't know what time it is where you are, but I'm happy that you logged on, you subscribe to the channel, and you are here. Okay. 289 people picked iron deficiency, but it was actually smoking that was the right answer. 57 people got that right. Our leadership board is not changed, but erythrocytosis or elevated hemoglobin and hematocrit is likely to have two causes, primary and a secondary cause. Primary cause is due to the JAK2 mutation. We did go over JAK2 mutation uh, for one of our study sessions. And the secondary cause could be due to smoking, testosterone use, or when our patient is put in oxygen deprivation states. Okay, so smoking can do that for sure. Chemotherapy can cause neutropenic fever. Routine tests that should be monitored, okay, includes red tumor markers, yellow imaging scans, okay, complete blood count, <laughs> green urine cultures, okay, here we go, chemotherapy can cause neutropenic fevers, that's all I need to say right there. That's it. What is the appropriate exam for that? Oh, I hope you guys get this one right. This is safety. This is safety for your patients. Are you guys going to be safe nurses? Yes, I know you are. I know that you guys are. And I see the answers on the screen. And I see the Remar nurses that are getting this one right. Makes me so proud. Makes me so very proud. Okay. Correct answer is... Color blue, color blue. And the majority of you did get this right. Those who were able to answer. 
Whew. Okay. Complete blood count. To monitor if the client has a neutropenic fever, you need to look at the complete blood count because your neutrophils need to be monitored. All right. The tumor markers and the Im imaging scans are going to detect the cancer, the cancer part of it. Moving on, the most important intervention in a client presenting with chest pain is oh, red, administer morphine, <laughs> yellow, administer oxygen, blue, monitor vital signs, green, administer su nitroglycerin, sublingual, administering sublingual nitroglycerin. We did this as part of the pregame. Do you guys remember? We talk about a client and they're presenting with chest pain. You don't know. You don't know what the chest pain is, but they're presenting with it. Okay. That's all I want to say about it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's all I want to say. What do we do? Okay. The most important, the most important. I hope you guys get this one right. What did you pick? What did you pick? Oh, the majority of you picked nitroglycerin sublingual. The most important intervention. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So oxygen here. Okay. Clients with chest pain are suspected with a myocardial infarction. Administering oxygen is the priority action because it can prevent ineffective tissue perfusion, which is common in patients and clients with MI. Oh, can also relieve restlessness, okay? So we know the acronym is MONA, okay? But the order that we give it is, somebody put this on the screen, ONAM. So we give oxygen first, then nitroglycerin, then aspirin, then morphine, okay? So we're gonna prioritize the oxygenation for cardiac issues because it is the heart's job to, to do what? It's the heart's job to circulate oxygen throughout the entire body. And so if the heart is affected, then you can guarantee that probably the toes are not getting oxygen, the fingertips, the brain, the brain is probably not getting oxygen if a person has um, um, a myocardial infarction. So, oh, nam, we prioritize the oxygen over the nitroglycerin, okay? Over the nitroglycerin. Okay, that's okay. We're, sh we're coming here to learn. Uh-huh, we're coming here to learn. That's why you showed up. All right, next question is this. The nurse assesses a client with myocardial infarction and developing pulmonary edema, okay? During auscultation, which breath sound is expected to be present? Is it red strider, yellow crackles, blue ronchi, or green wheezes? Okay. Hey, everybody, come on in. Okay. We're studying. We're deep in the studying. And I'm asking you about a client with myocardial infar infarction, developing pulmonary edema, and we're listening to the lung sounds, okay? What are we expecting to be hearing? This is a simple question if you know content. This is a straight up, you wanna get this question on your NCLEX exam. You absolutely want to get this question on your NCLEX exam because this is an easy pass, easy pass. And if you get this one right, you know you know your pulmonary edema, congestive heart failure information. Correct answer is easy, yellow, crackles. Okay. If you didn't get this one right, you need to review congestive heart failure. Okay. Pulmonary edema. We are expecting to hear some crackles. So the signs of pulmonary edema include breathlessness, agitation, development of frothy pink tinged sputum, inspiratory. Okay. Fine crackles that can be in the anterior and posterior side of both lungs. Great job. Great job. I'm moving on. I'm not going to tarry. You guys are pretty good for that one. The client with epilepsy receives daily treatment of phenotin daily. Ooh, which of the following symptoms indicate phenotin toxicity? Is it alertness, confusion, 
elevated blood pressure or rashes. Ah, client with epilepsy. So we know we're talking about an anti-convulsant medication and we need to, we need to address that. We need to address that. So phenotin can build up into your system, okay? And it can become toxic in the body. It can be toxic in the body. So with all that being said, what is going to be your priority here? Mm -hmm. What signs are we looking for? I see some blues. I see some greens. I see some yellows. Correct answer was yellow. The majority of you had that one right. So let's see. Did our leadership board change? Not too much. No. Confusion. Confusion is a symptom of phenotin intoxication. Other indicators of toxicity the nurse should look for include Neurologic abnormalities such as eye changes, so nystagmus, attack, nystagmus, ataxia, disorientation, dizziness, or difficulty speaking. Difficulty speaking. Okay. Next question is this. A four-year-old male client recently diagnosed with Kawasaki's disease is admitted to the pediatric unit. In developing a plan of care, what action should the nurse prioritize? Red, hourly monitoring of intake and output. Yellow, perform passive range of motion activities. Blue, instruct appropriate skin care to the parents. Or green, obtain vital signs every eight hours. This is more of a, it's a common sense question, honestly. Even if you are not familiar with the condition, prioritization needs to be, um, the principles of prioritization need to be present. All right. And so, of course, airway breathing circulation is a way to prioritize, but there's another way to prioritize. Is everybody getting this one? Way to prioritize is also Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And so here, even if you don't know what Kawasaki's disease is, if you look at the nursing interventions, what is going to be more appropriate in assessment? Is it going to be the hourly monitoring of intake and output, which is your your fluids, right? In your electrolytes, is it going to be passive range of motion? No. Is it going to be skin care? No. Is it going to be vital signs every eight hours? No. So some NCLEX questions you can answer if you use common sense in nursing, if you understand what your role is in that patient's care. All right. So even if you didn't know Kawasaki's disease, you should have been able to prioritize your way out of that one. Okay. Correct answer, hourly monitoring of intake and output, okay? And essentially, um, patients with Kawasaki disease, um, they have a risk of developing congestive heart failure in the early stages, but monitoring intake and output is necessary, okay? Here we go, number. Number, I don't know, I'm sure what number it is, but it's question, it's the next question. <laughs> the nurse develops a care, a care plan for a client being weaned off of barbiturates. Which of the following should be the priority? All right, here we go. Common sense question. Barbiturates. Refer to a behavioral therapist. Apply seizure precautions. Advise the client not to watch TV to avoid noise. Monitor for arrhythmias. All right. So we're weaning our patient off of a medication or a drug. Do you know what that drug is used for? <laughs> Do you know? Okay, I'm just going to stop there. I'm going to let you figure it out. Go with your first mind. Try not to second guess yourself. That's going to be very important. All right, did we get this one right? Yes, the majority of you did get this one right. Good job. All right, going with your second mind, not second guessing yourself. It will always be, it will always be a positive for you, always be a benefit. 
Seizures are controlled with medications such as barbiturates. Barbiturate withdrawal may result in seizures. Therefore, seizure safety precautions should be implemented. Amazing job, guys. All right, amazing job. So a 67-year-old male client with posterior cerebral artery stroke is admitted to the intensive care unit. Which of the following is a common assessment finding of posterior cerebral artery stroke? Ah, critical thinking. Is it vision loss, slurred speech, memory loss, difficulty in balance? Y'all on your own for this one. <laughs> I have no help to give. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Okay. 15 seconds. 15 seconds. Posterior cerebral artery. Okay. Vision loss, slurred speech, memory loss, difficulty in balance. What are we going to go with? Correct answer here. Ah, uh, it is vision loss. A lot of people pick slurred speech. Did our leadership board change? Not too much. Vision loss. All right. So clients with posterior cerebral artery stroke may have headaches and mild visual impairments such as vision loss, diplopia, inability to see half of the view, difficulties reading, distinguishing color, or recognizing familiar faces. Beautiful job. A 56-year-old client underwent a coronary artery bypass. That's open heart, open chest heart surgery, okay, 24 hours ago and is being monitored at the intensive care unit. The client started to feel sudden chest pain and presses the emergency call button to call the nurse. What is the priority nursing action. Whew. Number one, administer opioid analgesics, analgesics. Yellow, obtain an ECG. Blue, place the client in Simi Fowler's position. Green, check vital signs and wound dressing. What are we going to be doing here? Patient, okay, starting to feel something presses that emergency call button. What are we gonna do? Two seconds and we got, what would you do? Correct answer, check vital signs and wound dressing. A lot of people put place the client in the semi Fowler's position, all right. Let's read the rationale for this one. Okay, the nurse must carefully assess the client to identify whether the chest pain is anticipated after the surgery or is this a surgical complication? Checking first the vital signs for any abnormalities and also the wound dressing for bleeding is going to be the priority here. Our patient just had open, uh, open heart surgery. The nurse is caring for a client with hypo para thyroidism to check for the onset of hypocalcemia which of the following symptoms must be observed so what's the connection here is it red loss of appetite yellow numbness of hands blue abdominal cramps or green headache or green headache what saith you guys here when we are talking about hypoparathyroidism, and we're also talking about hypocalcemia. What are the signs we're going to be looking for? Mm -hmm. Somebody come in here and put the right answer on the screen. You got about eight seconds left. You got about eight seconds left to get in on this content and make the connection. Um, let's we'll see how well did we do. Amazing majority of you got this one right. Did you get it right? Numbness of hands. The first symptoms uh, of, are numbness of, are the numbness, tingling in the hands and mouth area. And then as the calcium level drops below seven, 
This develops into the paresthesias in the leg and feet, carpopedal spasms, laryngeal or glottic or bronchial spasms, and then respiratory arrest. It's going to affect the muscles in a severe way. Okay. The nurse reviews a client's medical history suspected of Graves' disease, okay? Which of the following findings is considered a hallmark of the disease? Is it elevated white blood cell count in the urine, yellow confusion, blue loss of appetite, or green heat intolerance? Talking about Graves' disease and the signs of the disease. I really like this uh, type of question because it's content heavy. And it's just asking you, what do you know about the condition? What do you know about the condition? It's a simple um, pathophysiology. The signs and symptoms are straightforward. I am expecting you to have a good handle on this, on this particular subject matter. Okay. Graves disease. Hmm? <laughs> Is that hyper hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism? Do you know? Do you know? All right. Yes. That's what I was expecting. You guys know your content. Heat intolerance. But if you don't know your content, let's get into the V2. Let's get that content going. The hallmark symptom of hyperthyroidism or Graves disease is heat intolerance accompanied by diaphoresis when the surrounding temperature is comfortable for others. So I'm glad that you guys know about the signs and symptoms of Graves' disease. Take it to the next step. Make sure that you know how do we treat Graves' disease and what is the patient education following that treatment? Are they on the treatment for a lifetime? Are they gonna be preparing for surgery? What is their diet gonna be like? Is there any changes in that? And so a part of you understanding content is knowing how to take a patient from the emergency room, all the way to treatment, all the way to discharge. That's how you do it, okay? Okay. Okay, here we go. Um, there you go. The newly hired nurse reviews the protocols and guidelines for providing care to clients in the emergency department. What is the most reliable indicator of cardiac arrest? Okay. Is it the red impalpable carotid parse, pulse? Yellow stupor? Blue apnea? Or green absence of the Golgi tendon reflex? I'm asking you, what is the most reliable indicator of cardiac arrest? Red, impalpable, carotid pulse. Yellow is stupor. Blue is apnea. Or green is absence of the Golgi tendon reflex. Four seconds on the clock. Let's go. Yes, the majority of you got it. Cardiac arrest. You're not going to feel a pulse, right? All right. The absence of the carotid pulse indicates cardiac arrest since it's the nearest palpable artery to the heart and can detect even a severely weak pump. Did you learn something about that? The carotid pulse is the nearest palpable artery to the heart. All right, final question. The nurse cares for a client with second degree burns and notices that the urine draining into the urine bag is colored mahogany. Mahogany, <laughs> which is the most appropriate intervention of this finding. I'm sorry, which is the most appropriate interpretation of this finding? Is it anemia, a urinary tract infection? Rhabdomyolysis or protein urea. Protein urea. Why did I say that? All right. Urine that is mahogany color, or brownish color. Is it anemia? Is it a UTI? Is it rhabdomyolysis or protein urea? 
come on in. What say if you guys? Just one. Will one person get this right? Can we get 10 people to get this right? We got 264 people to get this right. And the correct answer was the rhabdomyolysis. Let's read why. This is a potentially fatal complication in severely burnt clients. And essentially you have a breakdown of the muscles. Uh, so the three basic symptoms are muscle soreness, weakest, weakness, reddish brown or mahogany colored urine. And this is because the muscle protein is breaking down into the blood and then it's being filtered through the kidneys. You never want to see this. It's never a good sign. All right. And let's do our podium winter winners for tonight. Podium third place. Give it up for Larry B. Coming in strong. $30 to you. Carmen Min 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 got second place. And our first place winner Hey, is Steph. Congratulations. Top prize. If you won, please take a shot of your podium. Screenshot it to me. Okay. Screenshot that podium to me. Congratulations. I will be paying out cash at prizes for today's game night winners. Congratulations to everybody who played. Not too bad. Rima says I was in fifth place. Kahoot is intense. It is really intense because we have literally hundreds of people trying to answer as quickly as possible. And then you have to persist through uh, however long it takes me to read and whatever distractors I put into the question. But this was indeed Winning Wednesday on tonight. So as we are transitioning into Winning Wednesday, I want to go back to where we started from for just a few minutes. And I want to talk about how you can pass NCLEX, how you can be next to pass NCLEX, and also answer any questions that you have. The process of passing NCLEX does not have to be a long one. I'm telling you, if you give me four weeks or less, I want to make sure that you know all of the content, all of the little content that we went over tonight from different areas. I want to make sure that you know everything that you need in order to be successful for your exam. So if you've been struggling on like what to study, how long should I be studying? Where do I study? I got the solution right here. Can't see it, but it's my study calendar. Okay. It's my study calendar. And I, we do little things like this. I think too. Somebody says, I love the game. Even if I didn't win, I learned so many things. Yes, 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 yes. And that is the whole goal, okay? That is the whole goal. Somebody said we should start donating a dollar. If everybody donates a dollar, listen, if everybody donates a dollar to the Kahoot game, the winner will get like $700. Like we had a thousand people show up today. Y'all want to bless y'all community like that? That would be incredible. If, if you needed, if you had to put in a dollar to pay, you could literally go home because I wouldn't want any of that money. <laughs> That is, that is you. Somebody, Carmen says, Carmen, who got second place? Is that what, Zach, did you get second place today? She said, let's do it. All right. We might have to put that in for um, maybe a holiday. Maybe we can do that during the holidays. You guys fund your own prizes. A dollar to play. Whoever wins takes home everything. A dollar for $700. You can't beat that odd. <laughs> Let me tell you though, and, because this is, this is what I talked about when I was in Las Vegas. People be down to gamble. You are down to gamble on winning odds. But let me tell you this. You guys have the best bet, which is yourselves. And when it comes to you passing NCLEX, you literally, if you take this test and pass it one time, it pays you for the rest of your working career. Literally, it pays you exponentially. So yes, V2, V2. $89 right now for the quick start. And I'm telling you, you invest that $89, that will turn into $60,000 for some of you, $70,000. My first year of nursing, I made about $66,000. And I didn't even, I took my NCLEX in, uh, I took my NCLEX actually in August. I think I took my NCLEX in August. So in this month, I took it and passed and it paid me. $66,000 after that. So are you worth it? Absolutely. What's the best bet? Bet on yourself. Gamble on yourself because you guys show up for yourself. Seriously, seriously, seriously. 
Thank you guys so much. Okay, what are the questions do you have about the V2? I do wanna talk about it. I do wanna make sure that you understand that honestly, if you have this book right here, if you have my Quick Facts book, go to remarnurse.com, get the lectures, it will give you the rest of the V2. What is V2? V2 is my content-based review. It is my content-based review, and it is designed to help you get the content, okay? So topics like pregnancy, infant heart defects, age-specific nursing care, diets. Ooh, can't forget the diets, all right? Basic care and comfort. Um, thank you so much. IV fluids. These are all subjects that I didn't want to write about in a book because you learn them so much faster when I explain them to you, especially if you're an audio visual learner. So this is uh, this is for on honestly people who are audio visual learners like myself. The total package for four weeks, which is one month in the V2, is just eighty nine dollars. Okay, one month. Now you can do the extended program that's $169 that gives you three months access in the v2 plus quick facts it gives you everything for three months or if you just want to get started $89 so those of you who are testing um you know August September October you want to get that NCLEX review in this is the time all right can we have a set aside date for Kahoot I'll think about that I definitely will um, if you pass the CAT exam, what does it mean? Can you explain it? Okay, so when you test and you take the CAT exam in V2, you are going to get a printout that looks like this, and it will tell you, just like the NCLEX exam, the categories that you were above or below passing. I want you to look to see first, have you passed it, okay? Look to see first, have you passed it? If you passed it, that's an amazing sign. But I bet you there will still be some categories that you might be below passing standard in and you want to get into the question bank and just review those subjects. Do you have time? The whole reason why I want you to take the CAT exam is so that you can use it as another tool. Okay. You can use it as another tool in order for you to pass. That's what CAT exams are. They're study resources. You, you know, you're supposed to use them as a, as a resource. Okay. Um, let me answer these questions. These are good. I've tested three times. I'm so nervous. I understand that. I understand when you fail, you do have a sense of anxiety because of that negative experience. But I'm telling you, there have been people who have taken NCLEX three times just like you. And on the fourth time, they pass it. They pass it. Okay. So if you have the book, do you buy this too? Yes. So if you have this book, you have, you have a portion of the program. All right, so the things that are in this book are separate from the things that are in the V2. So I want you to have the lectures too. I want you to have everything that you need and you get it all in one place, okay? I'm taking questions on V2, on how to pass NCLEX. Um, how do you get V2? It's really simple. If you go to remarnurse.com, okay, which is my website, if you go to remarnurse.com, it's going to look like this. All right. And right here, oh, let me go up. <laughs> Crazy computer. Hold on one second. It's just going its own thing. All right. So if you go to, well, first, let me start here. So if you go to the website, you can put join NCLEX V2 review. And then it's going to ask you whether you're RN or PN. I think I put RN here. So you can do the 30-day RN access for $89. Or you could do 90-day access for $169. You're going to get the same thing. The difference is there's the time period and the price. If you don't know, if you want V2, if you want to know what it is like, I am challenging you to just join the free trial. That, I think that's the most important thing that you can do to see if the way I teach, if my program is going to be beneficial for how you learn, okay? If you're an audio-visual learner, if you're somebody that likes to write things down, this is the program for you. It solves the problem of learning. If you're a person that likes to read books and learn through, you know, reading a, a lot of material that's printed for you, then this may not be the program for you. I, I don't know. Um, if you're just a person that likes to read, things and you can read a paragraph and it makes sense to you, 
quick facts might be good for you. Um, but for me, I'm the type of person that I need to hear it and then it makes sense to me. And I tell this all the time. My husband is a visual learner. He'll look at a chart. He does graphics and he'll be like, Regina, come look at this. Isn't this amazing? And I will say to him, just tell me what it is. Explain to me what, what is, what is it that you want me to see? I need somebody to explain it to me. And then that's how I get it. Okay. Um, somebody says, is V2 for both RN and PN? Yes, it's for both RN and PN. It is not going to be the same. You're going to have different questions in your PN question bank. The V2 is going to come with the lectures. It's going to come with quick facts. And it's going to come with a downloadable workbook, okay, that you will print out. Here's my downloadable workbook. Okay, it looks like this. Now, I also have a printed version of this workbook that I like to use. And it's just because this gets kind of raggedy. So I can also send you a print version or you can download this version. Either way, um, people who download this version do a better job than me because they actually put it in a binder and they make it nice and neat like that. I have this book too. Um, if you want me to print this book out for you, it's an additional $30, but then you don't have to worry about printing it out and binding it, okay? I think that this program is simple and straightforward. The reason why I have the combination of lecture videos and writing things down and quick facts is because this is the system that I've developed to help nursing students, people who have failed NCLEX before. I use this program to help them not only learn content, but actually build up their confidence and pass the next time they take the exam. So even if they didn't pass the first time, then they end up passing the first time with Remar. And at the end of the day, it's about you being able to get your license. So it may seem like, what, what is it? How does it work? But I promise you that when you have access to the platform, you find that you're studying less, less overall. Okay, let me answer these questions. I'm not trying to ignore you guys. I see a lot of questions on here. Okay, um, my first live class with you. Thank you so much. Okay, what else did you say? Um, thank you, amazing teacher. Is the total package 89 or 169? I think I explained that here. It's $89 and this is for 30 days. It's $169 if you want three months access to, to it. Does that explain it? Okay. Um, and also, I'll say this. If you already have the Quick Facts book, then the program goes down from $89 to $69 because you don't need to buy the Quick Facts book twice. Um. you. Okay, Bernadette, if you have a, um, if you have something specific about your account, please send me an email at support at remarreview.com because I would like to look it up for you. And I just don't have access to, um, I just don't have access to your account right now. So please send me an email. CAD exams. So I'll read this one. I passed in July 26. Thanks, Regina. Amazing. Okay. For those of you who have V2 already, you don't have to pay the 169. It would just be $50 after your initial subscription. Okay. So after your subscription is over with, if you have the three months access, then it would just be $50 per month if you want to keep access to the platform. But that's totally up to you, okay? But what I don't want you to do is I don't want you to buy the V2 again. I don't think the system will even let you buy it again because then you'll lose all of the progress that you did. So I don't want you to have to do that, okay? Um, How much is it to renew? It's still the same for renewal. Yes. 
Regina, I took my second test. I passed it. Which which test are you talking about, Marie? Edney, it says here, I have a question. Every time in, I'm in the V2 now, it keeps saying I'm in the trial mode. Can you tell me why? So let me know, Edney. V2 will tell you you're in the trial mode when you are in the trial mode. So I don't know if you purchased the original um, subscription and then your subscription expired. I'm not sure if that's the case, but if you cancel your subscription, you still will have access to the V2. It will just put you in the trial mode of the V2. So you never lose access to the V2. You either have an act active subscription where you're going through the course or you have a trial mode where you're able to get into it and just view certain videos and do certain practice exams. But you never lose access to the V2. Once you sign up for it, it will recognize you. In regards to the CAT practice, does it shut off once you've passed? Yes, you get two computer adaptive exams with your V2 subscription. And it behaves just like the actual NCLEX exam. So when you initiate your CAT exam, and let me show you where it is. Let me show you how to get to your CAT exam, okay? So what you're gonna do, so when you're in V2, when you're in V2, when you go to, you have immediate access to all the parts of the V2. So you can go to the question bank, all right? And so when you go to the question bank, it will show you how many questions are there in total. So there's over 2,000 questions. Um, you'll see the ones you got right, the partially correct ones, the incorrect ones, okay? And then when you create a test in V2, you're gonna go to create a test. You have to name your test in V2. So we can just name this winning Wednesday, okay? Anyways, you can do a test mode. This is where your computer adaptive test is. So you can choose tutor, test, or computer adaptive test. And it'll tell you you have two computer adaptive tests available, whatever have you, all right? Now, once you click on your computer adaptive test, you're not going to be able to choose the subject or the lessons because it will create that computer adaptive experience for you. You don't wanna do computer adaptive tests, you're not ready for it, just create a regular exam, okay? Just create a regular test and then you can choose whether you want it to be an easy, let's do easy. You can choose if you want it to be a tutored or a time, you can choose if you just wanna do next gen case studies. It's all up to you, all right, it's all up to you. You can choose how many you wanna do from easy, moderate or hard, time done time. And this is how you create your quizzes in V2. It's very simple, it's very straightforward. And again, it's for you to be prepared for next gen NCLEX. That is the whole goal. And the question bank also is for you to actually practice the critical thinking after you do your content. I know you guys want to do a lot of case studies and practice in the question bank, but I'm I'm telling you sincerely, start with the lectures. Follow the study calendar. So I hope that made sense. Um, and so anyways, the computer adaptive exam will definitely be a five hour exam. It will shut off once you hit the 95% probability of passing. It will tell you whether you passed or failed and how you did in the categories, but no, you will not be able to review individual questions in my CAT exam. Um, and that is just because it is a true computer adaptive exam. So that means when you have a computer adaptive test, there is no reviewing of individual questions. That skews the statistics. Can you get more than two CAT exams? All right, you can get more than two CAT exams. You just have to pay for the extra CAT exam. Okay, hopefully I showed you where you could find the CAT exam. Let me know, Paterne, am I saying that right? If you are still not sure where to find it, but it is in the question bank. Um, this is a good question. Deidre says, I'm doing well on the lectures. And when it comes to Quick Facts book, I'm struggling to memorize it. Should I try writing down notes for Quick Facts? I'm a visual and audio learner. I do learn more writing. So Quick Facts book, I'm gonna tell you, if you struggle with memorizing things, Quick Facts book is the best because literally it's just question and answer. Can you see it? 
So honestly, what I like to do is sometimes I will take quick facts and I will half the page like this. So I'll like put the page in half and then I'll ask myself questions to see if I know the answers. I only write down things from here that I don't know the answers at all with. And then you can make flashcards. Another thing that might help you um, is if you had somebody read this to you or you picked up a study partner and asked them questions. And I think the reading level in this, like my seven, eight year old was reading this book. So get a friend, all right, and try it that way. Flashcards, have somebody read it to you. Um, and that, that way might help you. Okay. Um, Regina, is pain a priority or it depends on the type of pain? Pain is typically not a priority, especially if it's expected pain. So if you have a patient and they have a DVT, right, and they report pain, that's not a priority. Um, if they report shortness of breath, that is a priority. And so sometimes I think we can focus on the condition like, oh, a DVT, that's pretty serious. But if the patient is reporting pain, then that um, that's expected pain, okay? Bonary, am I saying that right? I'm officially here to say thank you, Regina. I just passed my test with 100 questions and most of my questions came from your Quick Facts book. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. I do think that um, Quick Facts is a great resource because it is straight content. It is straight content. So definitely that's why I tell you guys to make sure you memorize, make sure you memorize everything in Quick Facts. Nurse Regina, is it possible to buy the CAT exam only? Thank you. It's not possible to buy just the CAT exam only. Um because it's actually embedded into the platform. So if you, in order, as you can see, in order to get to the CAT exam, you got to go through the question bank. And so while you're there, you could actually be doing practice questions. And for me, even more important, you can get into these lectures. All right. I want you guys to get into these lectures. I want you to be able to make sure that you have these lectures underneath your belt. Um, also the 30 day challenge is here and I'm not trying to give you guys too much to think about, but there are so many things that support you when you enter into the V2. Okay. It's a really great system. Everything is in one place and you can spend four weeks, sometimes less and get everything you need to pass the exam. Okay. Not to mention all the new things that I put in there for you guys. So I, um, I, I want to offer you solutions to your problems because sometimes we sit with problems for way too long. We sit with problems for way too long. So at the end of the day, um, here at Team Remar, we're trying to do everything we can to get this technology into your hands. Technology has been a separator for a lot of people. And sometimes when you have a platform like this, you companies will prioritize profit over the people. And so you can have uh, this type of technology and charge three, four hundred dollars for it just because you know what it can do for a person. Um, the V2 right now is eighty nine dollars, literally. And that includes physical books, a question bank, computer adaptive exams. Um, and so we, we have a responsibility if we say that we're here to help you guys and that is not to do you harm. And so we're trying to do everything we can to put this technology into the hands of nursing students who need it in order to, um, get their license and get their license as quickly as possible. Okay. Uh, where can I see if I pass my CAT exam? You can see if you passed your CAT exam in your history section of your um, of your test results, okay? Let me see if I can get there for you. I wanna show you. All right, um, I have to take my, I have to take, I have two weeks to take my exam. Can I see you in V2? Can you finish V2? You can, 
But honestly, what I would suggest is that you move your test date. If you have, if you are watching this and you know, man, I really need to study content. I don't want to go into the exam half prepared. Give yourself time. Give yourself time to prepare. Don't let that NCLEX test date make you feel like you just have to go in there and get it over with. You are in control of this process. You are in control of when you test. You are in control of what you study. All right. So this is where you can find your this is where you can find your computer adaptive exam. And it is essentially in your test history. If you took a computer adaptive test, all right, it will tell you under your test type. I'm trying to see where I took one at. If you took your computer adaptive exam, it should come up in your test history and you will um, see it down here, okay? Why can you not look at the questions? It is because I, it's just like the regular NCLEX. Um, so some people call their question bank computer adaptive testing, but it doesn't behave like an actual computer adaptive test. Um, and so because mine is as close to the NCLEX as possible, it's not going to let you just like after NCLEX, you don't get to view those questions. There's a reason why. It's because of security and it is because we want our computer adaptive test to remain true and reflective to the student's experience. And so um, you don't get to opt out. There is not a there is not a skipping a functionality. There is not a going back it literally is going to be like the NCLEX, okay? Um, I have the Quick Facts book, but not the Next Gen. Can I still use it as a resource? Yes, you can. Um, I would say this, if you have the Quick Facts book, but you don't have V2, prioritize getting V2 over another Quick Facts book. I would much prefer you get the lectures in the question bank than getting the another quick facts. Because again, the, the information in this blue book is different from quick facts, is, is totally different. So I would prefer for you to have that one. Okay. Um, so I wrote the highlighting questions. I changed the structure of the highlighting questions a little bit differently. So now when you're in the cue bank, it should say highlight the sentence. Okay. Highlight the sentence or highlight the characteristics. It should be like the full sentence. Okay. Um, do you think we should do questions after each lecture? No, I think that you should follow the study calendar. I think you should st follow the study calendar because remember, there's already going to be questions after lectures. Okay. There's already going to be questions after the lectures. So for example, when you do pregnancy, you're going to have a progress exam. Okay. You're going to have these exams. Let that be enough. Okay. Let that be enough for you. Your computer adaptive exam should shut off at 80. Um, let's see. Crispy World says, I just finished my program today, ready to sit for exit. Does it help? Yes, the program will help with your exit exams. How much time do you have, though, in order to study? Yep. Okay. Um, the, I brought the quick facts. I want the V2. How will I pay the 69, not the 89? Let me see if I can show you guys how you can get the discounted price. Mm, let me see if I can do this. Um, that's not what I wanted. <sighs> I have to go into cognito mode because I feel like it will log me into... I feel like it will log me into my old account. Okay, here we go. So let me do an incognito window. I did it. Okay, so if you go to remarnurse.com, it will take you to my website. And what I'm showing you is how to do the um, 
And so what the first thing you're going to do is you're going to pick whether you're a registered nurse or a practical nurse. And I don't know which one you are. Let's just say you're a practical nurse. So you're going to click on practical nurse. Okay. Go to practical nurse. And it'll say join V2 course. You can click this and it'll take you down to whether you want to join the 89 or the 169 for three months. You mentioned the 89. So let's do that. When you go to buy now, it is going to tell you everything that you're going to get on this side. So this is where um, you would you see the quick facts. If you already have this book, then you can just put it in the trash and you don't buy it again. And it's sixty nine dollars. OK, um, also at the same time, for those of you who are interested in getting the physical book, you're going to get this downloadable printable book in the sixty nine dollars. All right. You'll get that book. But if you want me to print it out, this is where you would add it. All right. And so what you would do is you would go here where it says um, NCLEX V2 physical workbook enhanced RN. Um, an LPN edition. And so you just click on that. And then so it'll add it's $35 for me to do that. All right. And this is where you would add it. But if you want to print it out yourself, and then you can just take it off. And it is the $69. Okay. I think people always ask me, is there any difference between these two books? So this book, uh, one of the major differences is that I fill in can you see this? I don't know if you can see this. I fill in a lot more of the text. So I think you take less notes with this book. And then at the back of this book, you have the clinical judgment activity section. And so this is um, activities that you can do that also help with critical thinking. So this is something that is um, that you can get on that checkout page. Crispy World, if you can do this one, if you can do your exit exam whenever you want to, I would definitely say go through the V2, okay? Okay. Patient says, I'm doing perfectly good now with my V2 and feeling closer, Regina. That's the whole goal. That's the whole goal. You should, you should be a different student at the beginning of your course than at the end of your course. All right. Um, kindly elaborate on side effects versus adverse events effects in medication. So just in general, um, in general, side effects are something that you expect, something you teach on. Adverse effects would be a medical emergency. Okay. Um, Kelly, I purchased the V2 on August the 2nd, but honestly, I'm not committed. But I listened to your lectures. Is there any way I can stop it? Um, there's not a way that you can stop it. There is a way that you can cancel your subscription for sure. You can do that in your settings. Um, but I would like to remind you that this is something that literally can, it can alter, you know, your lifestyle, the course of your life. And so I, I, I struggle when I see nursing students get to the finish line and then don't finish the race. And so all of the work that you've done literally brings you up to this point. And it's just a tiny little, it's just a tiny little time period that you need to just sacrifice, okay? For just a little bit longer so that you can move to the next level. Because the goal for you when you started nursing school was to be a nurse, that was the goal. And that meant something to you. And so you now have everything you need. You now have everything you need to make that goal a reality. You already made the investment into the V2. You made the investment into yourself. So um, don't let it go. Don't let it go. OK, but I like that you recognize that you're, you're not your heart is not into it. Your mind is not into it. But I would say do do a little bit more, okay? Try to do a little bit more, all right? And look at, actually, if you're not committed to this, where is your commitments, okay? What are you committed to right now? And are those things serving you in the way that you, in the way that you want them to be?
Okay. Um, the printed workbook is a little bit different from the downloadable workbook. It is a little bit different. <laughs> Somebody said, print the workbook, you will see. Can you show me how to get into the quiz bank? Sure thing. So um, after you finish your purchase or whatever, you'll fill out your account. You're going to get access to the V2 program. It will look like this. On the side panel, you have your directional icons, courses. Right under here is the quiz bank. So when you click on that quiz bank, you will be able to go to the quiz bank and you will also be able to start your um, start creating practice exams if, if that's what you want to do, if that's what you want to do. OK, so I, I hope that helps you. Ashley saying omega three capsules are good for memory. OK, all types of help here. And then also, again, as you're studying for this, you have the opportunity to just show up on Mondays and Wednesdays and join the study session. OK and join the study session. You have the opportunity to come here and listen to people who are giving testimonials, voice your frustrations, just keep it real, just keep it real. I think that's so helpful too. I think that's, um, I think that's really helpful. Do I have to do contents and video before doing the bank? Technically, no. If you just wanted to get into the V2 and just run practice questions, you can. But if you're following the system the way I intended you to, then you will have the option to watch those videos before getting into the question bank. OK. Um, you can. You can change the start date of your V2 if you're not ready to start it. Um, let me see if I can go back and show you guys how to do that. I had that window open. Now, where did it go? Before you, purchase. before you purchase. Yes, before you purchase. You have to do this before you purchase because if you don't, then I can't. I can't stop it. Okay, I'm going to have to do it over again. That's okay. So you go to remartnurse.com. Okay. This is for anybody that maybe missed the way we do it. We did it. All right, um, and then you're gonna pick whether you're an RN or PN. Let's go to RN. And you're gonna pick join the V2. All right, um, and you're gonna pick buy now if you're gonna do the $89 quick start. Down here at the bottom, let me change, let me take this here because maybe it was hidden. Click here to delay your start date. And when you do this, um, mm -hmm. all right. When you click on that, it's going to open up a calendar and this gives you the ability to change your start date up to 90 days. And so you literally, what? You don't have to get started until November now. I'm shocked. <laughs> um, I was not expecting to see that you literally don't have to get started until Thanksgiving. Um, and so that's, that's there for you guys who want that option. This is one of the reasons why we built the V2 platform because it's sweet. Like it does all these things um, that really are going to be helpful to you. Okay. Um, patient says, hi, Professor Regina. I took my NCLEX today for the first time, passed at 85 questions for the first time and just received my license. Thank you for all your teaching. Quick facts in V2. Proudly Team Remar, USRN. What country are you from? Let me know. Man. Yes. Awesome. Congratulations. I like to put testimonials inside of V22. That's amazing. First time. That's the goal. That's the goal. Um, you guys. And that's why that's what I want for you. I just want you guys to just do the work a little bit, just delay grat gratifications. And I know I just showed you, you don't have to start V2 until November. But what if you by November, by Thanksgiving, had your nursing license? What about that? I mean, wouldn't that be amazing to have, you know, a, a license for the holidays? So even if you wanted to, you could work Thanksgiving and get that overtime pay, that holiday pay. That's what patients is going to be dealing with. And so I don't I believe that nursing, when you become a licensed nurse, 
It literally, I've seen it. It changes what you have access to. It changes. I need y'all to get excited. I need you to get excited about the possibility of your life changing, your income changing, your ability to provide for yourself, your parents, your children. I need you to understand that literally there is nothing else. There is nothing else that is coming your way that will change your life like a nursing license when it comes to the career. There's nothing else coming. I don't care. I don't care what job you get. When you become a nurse, I can pick. I'm in Ohio. I was in Las Vegas for a week. I could have gotten a job in Las Vegas if I wanted to. I can go to California. I could go to Florida. I can go anywhere and and work. Very few people have that sort of potential, okay? People call me and ask me to come to work all the time. I turn down jobs. I don't chase the bag. The bag chases me. People say that. I don't have to do that. And so if you are not having that experience now and whatever you're doing, I'm trying to tell you, you make the investment in yourself by the holidays, especially people who have been out of school for a long time, by the holidays, that can be your reality. could be your reality. So I need you to get excited for for yourself. I'm excited for you. And I'm not even, I'm excited for you. But I need you to be excited for you. I need you to be, you know, uncomfortable. Don't be comfortable. If you're in a comfort zone, you're not going to experience any growth. And so you got to get up out of that comfort zone. You might need to get away from people who are encouraging you, okay, to stay in a comfort zone with them. Sometimes you got to cut some people out. Hmm. Yes. Huh? Yes, 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 yes. Um, yeah. Do you guys want to see a video from the V2? You want to study some content tonight? Let me know. Um, hi, Regina. I have your V2 workbook. Is there any way I could get just only the videos? I bought it before, but I still want to review those videos again. So no, there's not a way. You just, yeah, you can just renew the subscription. Okay. People said they want to see videos. All right. Which video should I play? Okay. Let me see. All right. So we have I'm going to say, yes, of course. We want to see lecture content. All right. Hmm. What lecture content shall we do? All right. So most of the videos are going to be short and sweet. Regina, if I did not purchase this V2, I would not be able to sleep. <laughs> uh, EKG is 36 minutes. No way. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. <laughs> Y'all got to get in V2 to get the EKG. And I'll say that too because... With the EKG, it's very important that you're not just listening to EKG. You need to be writing things down because, like, I literally have, like, the EKG strips and all the stuff to help you understand it. And so, ah, I don't want to show that one. Okay, let's do, um, uh, ooh, psych medications, but that's, like, long, too. Um, therapeutic. Okay, Mark's choice tonight. What will you have, my sir? Diagnostic procedures, endocrine. Endocrine is 10 minutes. Would you love endocrine? Want to do endocrine? TPN, antibiotics, and pharmacology. Mm. All right, Regina, just pick one. I really love orthopedics is my favorite, but it's 35 minutes. Yeah, it's one of my favorite. Right. right. That's true. I don't have to do the entire thing. All right. Um, Let's do blood gas interpretation. That's 13 minutes. Blood gas interpretations, anybody? Mm, or diagnostic procedures? It's 11 minutes. All right. Diagnostic procedures. It is. All right. Let's do this one. What? Yes, of course. All right. Diagnostic procedures. Get out your notebook. Let's get ready to hop into this. Let me maximize the screen. And let's get into it, okay? How to avail those cards. Somebody said, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Can you talk about 
Um, hold on one second. All right, diagnostic procedures. Can you guys see it? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Here we go. Okay, let me just pause for the cause and say this. When we are studying content, the overall goal is that at the end of our content study, we have a great overview of the, the thing that we're talking about, the conditions that it is involved in, and the patient education, all right? So that is the goal. It is important also, I think, for you to take notes when you are learning something, because when you're involved in the learning, like note taking, it helps you to remember things longer. OK, let's go back into it. Hey, diagnostic procedures. How often do we have to prepare a client to go to a diagnostic procedure? I'm going to go over the very common ones and also I'm going to go over what you need to know before you sit down for this NCLEX exam. Now, just to remember, all of the diagnostic procedures that I am speaking about will require an informed consent. That means that the patient understands the advantages and disadvantages before they have the procedure done. We're going to start with the lumbar puncture. What is a lumbar puncture? What is the position? And what is the client teaching? Let's do it. So the lumbar puncture is a procedure of taking fluid from the spine in the lower back with a needle. The patient should be sitting upright over a bedside table. Now, if they're too ill to do that, then the fetal position would allow the back of the spine to be flexed so that fluid could be collected. The client teaching that we want to know is that after the procedure, clients may experience a post lumbar puncture headache, and this is common. Clients are able to get acetaminophen to help with that headache. Let's move on to the MRIs. What is an MRI? It is a painless, non-invasive test that uses magnets to create a detailed picture. Now, the position the clients need to be in is very simply supine, but they have to be very still. Can you talk during an MRI? No, you cannot. You have to be very still. And let me tell you this, the average time of an MRI is one hour. Our client teaching that no metallic objects can be on the client during an MRI. CAT scans are actually a series of x-rays at different angles that are used to create an image of what's inside of the body. The position is also supine, but you know what? With CAT scans, clients are able to actually talk. Our client teaching that if an IV contrast dye is ordered, the client has to be MPO before the exam. Also, if the IV contrast dye is ordered, nurses should check that client for an allergy to iodine or shellfish. If no IV contrast is ordered, then clients are able to eat. Esophageal gastroduodenoscopy, or EGD, is a test that examines the lining of the esophagus, the stomach, and also part of the small intestine. So what happens actually is that a scope is put down the patient's throat to visualize all these areas. The best position for an EGD will be the recumbent position or left lateral. The client teaching for the EGD 
is that clients have to be NPO before the procedure. And that only makes sense because in order for you to go down the throat, you have to be confident that the patient will not vomit or aspirate. And the chances of that will decrease if there is no food in the stomach. So the EGD also takes about 30 to 60 minutes to be performed but the client can go home the same day. When a patient is MPO for an EGD, they always want to know, can I eat afterwards? And if NCLEX presents that scenario to you, the answer is the client can eat after the gag reflex returns. Oh, we have to go over the percutaneous liver biopsy there's a lot of teaching for liver biopsies. Let's just start with what it is. The liver biopsy is an invasive procedure. That means we go through the skin and we are removing a small piece of tissue from the liver. The position for the liver biopsy is clients should be placed supine with the right arm raised above the head. Our client education. Let's do before the exam and then let's talk about after the exam. So before the exam, we want to tell the clients do not take any anticoagulants or herbal medications. After the exam, what do you think is most important? After we have taken a piece of tissue from the liver, what do we have to think about preventing? What is the most serious complication after a percutaneous liver biopsy? The most serious complication is the hemorrhage. So how do we prevent a hemorrhage? What do we have to do? Are we given a medication? Are we doing a treatment? After the liver biopsy, we need to apply pressure to the liver so that it doesn't bleed. The way we do that is we put the client in the right lateral position with a pillow on the incision site, and this will apply pressure. The liver is very vascular, so it bleeds when the integrity of it is compromised. After the procedure, we have to tell our clients, you know what, do not lift anything heavier than 20 pounds for seven days. I wanna talk about the next diagnostic procedure. It is a thoracentesis. A thoracentesis is another invasive procedure that removes fluid from the pleural space. This is used to help the client breathe easier. The thoracentesis is actually considered a surgical puncture of the chest wall. The position for this client should be the low Fowler's position. And you guys know that the head of the bed is usually elevated about 30 degrees. The client education. We need to avoid thoracentesis in clients who have a cough. As you guys can realize, coughing could be very, very prohibitive if you're trying to surgically insert a needle in the lung space. Now, we also should monitor the client for hypovolemia and hypotension after the procedure. I want to end diagnostic procedures talking about a very important diagnostic test this is the angiogram or the arteriogram. Registered nurses, we need to know about this. This exam is when x-rays are taken after a dye has been injected into a blood vessel. Usually an angiogram is used because we want to see inside the blood vessel. It also can be used when there is a blocked coronary artery and we wanna get inside that artery to open it up. So the position usually is supine because the technician will go through the growing to get to the coronary artery. So usually it's the femoral artery that is accessed. What is important? What is important for an arteriogram? Now, before the exam, the client should be in PO. Because a contrast dye is used, we always want to assess for an iodine or shellfish allergy. 
the exam takes about two hours. And this exam is contraindicated in clients who have uh, renal compromise. Because if you have renal compromise and an iodine contrast is injected into the body, it can cause an acute kidney injury. The medications that are held for an arteriogram are metformin and anticoagulants. All right. Taking metformin before the procedure, as well as the iodine contrast, can cause an acute kidney injury. Anticoagulants should be avoided because, of course, of increased risk of bleeding. Now, after the exam, the most important thing for NCLEX is two things, really. The first is that you need to always assess the distal pulses after an arteriogram. The client should also be on bed rest about four to six hours. Now, this is important because if the client is not on bed rest and they're up moving around, then they have an increased risk for bleeding at their insertion site. So we need bed rest for four to six hours with that leg really immobilized. And that is to reduce the risk of site bleeding. And as registered nurses, it will be your responsibility to monitor any injection sites or insertion sites for hemorrhaging. All right, diagnostic procedures has been reviewed. Now, I hope that you guys understand that with the NCLEX review, we're reviewing things that you should have learned in nursing school. It is a review of things that you already know. However, if we come to a situation where you're learning information for the first time, that's okay too. But remember, you may have to do extra studying in the area before your exam. You guys are ready for the next topic. Let's go. All right, everybody. So that was a sample lecture inside of the V2 where I am trying to move you guys into the, the techniques of studying content first and then going into question banks. So I hope you enjoyed that short video. Most of the videos inside of V2 are between 10 to 20 minutes. So there's no excuse for the content. There's no excuse. It can be mastered. So however you are studying, let's do it. Let's upgrade to the content side of things, okay? Um, and when you're in the V2, all of those videos are going to be available for you. So thank you so much for studying with us. We studied, okay? We studied for over two hours, okay? My limit is three hours top. So I'm gonna get off here. It is 1030 at night in the United States. Thank you, everyone who started with me at eight <laughs> and then who continued on through the evening. So I hope you have a wonderful time. Short and sweet, short and sweet. You would just exit out of here. You could watch the video again if you want to, or you can start studying quick facts. But at the end of the day, get what you need, invest in this process, um, and you will see results. So I will see you guys inside of V2. Remember. Remember, you can, you will, and you must pass NCLEX. Later, guys.